Hello, everyone. Chad Franzen here, and welcome to the Kingdom Finance Show. Today, we are going to reveal what you really need to know about the economy, the stock market, and real estate. And we're going to give you action steps to take right now to become a Kingdom Impact Investor. It's time to bring clarity out of chaos. Let's get started. All right. Welcome, everyone. Chad Franzen here with the Kingdom Finance Show, and you're in for a treat today. Thanks so much for joining us. Today's topic is um, the first of a two-part uh, episode on our economic outlook for 2023. And obviously, we know there was a, a lot going on in the world over the last few years, um, going back to COVID, and then certainly last year had a lot of volatility in the stock market and bond market and crypto, and just in the general economy, a lot of a lot of uncertainty uh, with interest rates. Well, hey, we're we're uh, filming this here into January of 2023, really looking out. And again, I, I'm just going to share my opinions. I'm not here to give you specific investment advice. Um, and I'm not here to give you tax or legal advice for that matter. But let's just take an inventory of what's happened. You know, the uh, Federal Reserve raised interest rates uh, some eight times uh, last year, which we've talked about this on other episodes. And a lot of these interest rate hikes, uh, the, the, the magnitude of these interest rate hikes had not been seen at this level for a really long time. Now, one thing that I want to explain to you, uh, to our viewers here, is an interest rate. W- here's a question I get. Okay, Chad, why should I be concerned about interest rates going up? I'm a stay-at-home mom. I'm a student. I'm a retiree. Uh, I'm a small business owner. The reality is the the economy runs largely on what you and I spend. So two-thirds of the economy in the U.S. is consumer spending. Okay. Now, when the Federal Reserve raises or lowers interest rates, it is controlling the supply of money, the um, velocity of money um, on that. So when interest rates are really low, we it's called cheap money. It means you can go buy real estate and get a 3% mortgage. You can go buy a new car and get you know very low interest rate. Um, right? I mean, rates are low, which means you can borrow money for what seems like next to nothing. So there's going to be more activity, more spending, right? Money is has a higher velocity through the economy. Now, when interest rates go up, the opposite is true. And so money becomes tighter. It becomes more restrictive. So how many of you listening have, hey, I want to buy my first time home, or I want to buy some investment property, and you're like, well, good grief, it's uh, 7 8% interest rate. I, I'm not going to do that. Now, some of you listening who have been around a little longer can remember when interest rates and mortgage rates were uh, 14 16 18% going back to the early 80s. So um, the old adage, it could be worse, is true here. Now, we've been living through the lowest interest rate environment of, of all generations, and we may or may not ever get back to that. I doubt we get back to that anytime soon um, on that. So that's why it's important because if interest rates stay higher, it's going to affect the job market. It's going to affect uh, consumer spending as well. Now, an additional point here is that an interest rate hike is not fully reflected in the economy until sometimes up to nine months after the rate hike. So when you read in the news or hear through a friend or a spouse, hey, they raised interest rates, that's not fully absorbed into the economy until six, almost nine months later. Now, one of the things uh, that's happening now is, you know, 93% of CEOs and almost all Wall Street analysts are now projecting that the U.S. economy will officially be in a recession, most likely by the second quarter of 2023. So again, that that's what we're saying is that these interest rate hikes are now being fully felt in the economy. And so when we see the headline news and Time Magazine is profiling this past week, 
all the different companies that are laying off five to ten percent of their workforce. You know, big big companies like Amazon, Google, uh, Goldman Sachs, and others. Um, that is what the CEOs are seeing. Um, they see that the impact of all these rate increases uh, is potentially going to be very negative on the economy. Now, I'm going to share with you my my outlook on that. So stay with me. I'm not here to preach uh, doom and gloom. I do always want you to believe that we want to understand what's going on in the economic cycle, good, bad, or neutral, so that we can be informed investors. Now, we really believe in following Christian principles for how to invest and how to make an impact in our community for the glory of God. Even in running our businesses, investing, running our households, we don't ever want to run in fear because we have not been given a spirit of fear. So again, but we want to understand and not be naive about policies, what the government's doing, government debt, and things of that nature. Now, the Federal Reserve has several meetings each year, and I do anticipate my opinion is that they will continue to raise rates. Uh, They are fiercely committed to lowering inflation. You know inflation's a big deal when your kids at home, who who are very young, have the word inflation in their vocabulary. Uh, Because if the price of the toy or the price of the Lego went up by 18%, ah, that's inflation. So it's not just at the grocery store or at the gas pump. So I do feel uh, personally uh, here at Wealth Builders Investments, I do feel rates are going to keep going up, and um, I think they're going to have to do that. Now, the the um, test is going to be: Can the Fed engineer a soft landing? You know, will we have a black swan or some major geopolitical event um, like China invading Taiwan or some other thing that would? Um, kind of push the economy off a cliff into a deeper recession than it might be on track for. Now, the stock market, as many of you know, was down pretty significantly last year. Uh, depending on what index you were looking at, uh, it was down you know, anywhere, anywhere from 18 to 30%. And so statistically, in a recession, the stock market is going to go down from peak to bottom 36%. Now, we're just talking numbers. This is an average. There's no guarantee that it will do that. But historically speaking, the stock market will decline around 36%. Now, some can be more severe, like 50%, and some can be more shallow, um, like you know, 15 to 20. Now, I personally believe you know we are entering a recession. I don't think it's anything to be fearful of. Uh, I do think uh, we'll most likely experience a shallow recession. Now, this is my opinion. Um, I, I do think inflation is going to be very stubborn. I, I don't see inflation, you know, getting back down to two percent where they want it. Um, there's actually the likelihood that inflation could go back up before it goes down. Uh, that's a theory that could play out. We would call that a double dip inflation. And for you history buffs, that did happen in the post-World War II era, and it also happened uh, in the 1970s. Now, again, there's a couple of ways it can play out. It does depend on world events. It depends on government policies, uh, the U.S. budget, and uh, most importantly, interest rates set by the Federal Reserve. Now, you know, inflation uh, peaked at 9%. It's reported to be down at 657 and um, I think a lot of bank CEOs and economists believe it's going to continue to trend down, probably level out around 4 or 5%. You know, I, I'm kind of on the fence. I think that's one scenario, but it also could spike back up. Uh, I think we all would agree that inflation is higher when we look at what we pay at the pump and what we pay at restaurants, uh, you know, what eggs cost at grocery stores. And so that is obviously the government reported uh, inflation. But I think Americans feel that more in their pocketbook. So what what will really depend on how much further the stock market goes down is the consumer sentiment. Um, Do families still believe they can take nice vacations and go to nice restaurants and and do what we call discretionary spending? Uh, If we see a lot more layoffs, if we see 
rates going up more, uh, if we see um, some type of uh, geopolitical event that really really uh, shifts uh, consumer sentiment, that could make money come out of the economy because consumers are fearful and um, stocks could go down more. But you know, my opinion, I, I think it will be shallow. I don't think it's going to be as severe, but I do think we need to be prepared. Uh, for inflation and interest rates to be higher for longer than what we've really ever experienced as business owners uh, and investors. All right. You know, historically, you know, inflation uh, does roll over once interest rates get up to a certain level. So I think it's quite possible that, you know, the Fed may have to raise interest rates another one to two percentage points. I know... um, Jamie Dimon, CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase, and then a couple other former Treasury secretaries have have been quoted in the in the news as saying they think the Fed will probably land around five and a half to potentially six percent. And today, uh, here in January of 2023, the rate is 4.5. Now, remember, this matters not because um, it's just for people that like numbers. But it matters because it's going to affect your pocketbook as a spender, investor, family, business owner, employee um, on that. All right. I hope that's been helpful. Again, uh, really our economic outlook in summary, you know, I think inflation is going to stay stubbornly high. Uh, I do expect more volatility in the stock market. Again, merely my opinion. I'm not telling you how to invest. Uh, I think there's the potential for the S&P 500, uh, the 500 largest uh, U.S. companies. Uh, it's the most common index used as a reference. I think there's the potential that it could go down 20%. Um, I, I do think the economy is still very resilient. Uh, even though we're seeing layoffs, uh, the, the economy is still very resilient. But if sentiment changes, again, that could happen overnight. It could happen in a matter of, uh, of several days, and then um, it, it could be deeper. But When we talk about investing, and we'll do this on another program, there are certain types of asset classes that you want to invest in when you're in an inflationary environment, when you're in a recession. Um, And we'll talk about that on another show. And certainly, if you want to learn more about that, you can reach out to us um, directly on that. So I do think there are, regardless of where we are in the economic cycle, I think there are asset classes that will make sense to invest in. If you've heard us talk before at Wealth Builders, we really like the concept that an asset is something that puts money in your pocket. So much like owning a piece of property and you rent it out and you get a rent check. uh, Same way with stocks, bonds, mutual funds, investments, you name it, is we want things that create cash flow. Because rising cash flow during a tough economy is going to pay pay you back in spades, right? I mean, if you're getting cash flow from your investments, and even if they're down a little bit or they're not going up that much, but they're they're paying recurring cash flow to you, um, that's a winning formula if you if you truly are committed as a long term investor, and that's really what I want to encourage you with as we wrap up here on this. part one of our economic outlook, uh, you want to think about, hey, what, what exactly is my plan? You know, what is my personal financial strategy? And again, we want to encourage you to take a kingdom worldview when you think about investing and spending, when you think about giving and, and helping to make the world a better place um, on that. But there's also asset classes that you don't want to take just a buy and hold, I'm just going to not follow what's going on and just trust that it'll all work out. I do think, personally, that's a little too naive. There's just way too much at play with with government politics, with geopolitical things, um, with what I'm going to call monetary policy, that it, it definitely affects everyone, whether you live in rural America, whether you live in Australia, Africa, uh, or in Europe. Um, on that. So yeah, I do think uh, just in closing, you know, we look at the economy, I think it is more resilient than we think. I don't think inflation uh, is going anywhere anytime soon. I think it's actually much higher than what, what's being reported. 
And of course, interest rates, uh, watch those. I do think those are going to continue to go up. And uh, what we're waiting to see is how high will rates go. And if, if they ra- raise them too far uh, until they quote unquote break something, then that is really where we will see how deep the recession is going to be. So, hey, thanks for joining us today on the Kingdom Finance Show. I hope this has been educational for you. And if you want to learn more about Wealth Builders Investments, you can connect with us online at wealthbuilders.net forward slash invest. We have a great free download for you there. And you can also subscribe to our economic commentaries that we put out. Hey, make it a great day, and thanks so much for joining us on the Kingdom Finance Show. Take care. Thank you so much for joining me today on the Kingdom Finance Show. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and leave us a review. It really helps to get the word out. For more resources on becoming a Kingdom investor and to connect with us directly, visit our website at wealthbuilders.net. That's wealthbuilders.net. We'll see you next time on the Kingdom Finance Show.